This is Twit. How did how did Node.js get started, and 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 how did NPM in you know sort of enhance all that and make what we now have today as being one of the biggest, well, the biggest uh, repositories for um, uh, language-based software in the world? So um, that's a big question. So. Node started, uh, I, I think it was kind of, um, it was the right time and place in history for server-side JS to happen. Um, there were a bunch of people sort of in, involved with trying to get JavaScript on the server to be a thing that people would actually want to use. Um, Ryan Dahl, around the same time, was trying to figure out a better way to make HTTP web servers. He had been building um, servers in Ruby and in C and just kind of came to this idea that um, um, Asynchronous I.O. was a better way to to build web servers and figured, well, every language has a built-in I.O. paradigm sort of baked into the language itself. If you look at like um, Perl or Python or Ruby, uh, they all do synchronous I.O. as part of the standard library. Now, there were things that were sort of built as add-ons onto that, like um, binding any event in Perl or... Um, Oh gosh, I'm going to get the event machine in Ruby, and there was a few others. Um, there was it's twisted, a bunch in Python. twisted in Python. Yeah, twisted, isn't it in Python? Yeah, yeah. That's a. Yeah, okay. There's a couple of Python ones. Um, the problem is, if you use those, you have to be very careful that you don't accidentally pull in a module that does synchronous I/O, because then you, you know, all of the 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 paradigms kind of out the window. However, right. JavaScript didn't have a built-in how to do I/O, and to the extent that it did have any kind of paradigm like that, it was all done via asynchronous I.O. because web browsers. So mm -hmm. um, so Ryan figured this would be a, a community that was open to it, and it was a language platform that was kind of um, didn't prevent it by having some other paradigm already in place. And so around the same time, uh, 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 Google open sourced V8, and it was a, had a pretty nice interface to uh, uh, integrate with, so he decided to bind that with libev and libeio. Um, over, and that just kind of caught on. I, I was uh, I was in the middle of trying to figure out, like I said, in this in the server JS community, um, thinking about like ways to do server side JavaScript, and then Node showed up, and a bunch of us I think were just like, oh, okay, this is it. This is the one that we should be doing. Um, one of the problems. So I, I back in those days, um, in like mid two thousand nine, uh, Node the Node community was about a couple of dozen people on a mailing list and every so often and people were very excited and they were writing stuff and they were you know playing around with this new toy and um every so often people would you know share some module that they wrote and say hey i wrote this thing that connects to mysql or um you know caches requests or does whatever you could do with software um but the instructions for how to use it were always really convoluted and complicated and they'd send it to this mailing list and say Oh, you know, go get clone this repository and copy this file over here and run make and do this thing and that thing. And it was just like I was like, this is this is too hard. Um, I had uh, I'd previously worked at um, at Yahoo. I was actually at Yahoo at the time um, when I was getting involved in all this. And there's a really great tool at Yahoo called Yinst, which um, I, I I don't know how much npm actually bears any resemblance to Yinst, but certainly the um, the idea that you use a package manager. In development, not just to deploy something, not just to sort of distribute it, um, was a big part of the the motivation. I was like, I I want to build things in Node, and it's too hard because every I want to use everybody else's code. I don't want to build everything from scratch myself. So we need a better way to do this. Um, so the first the first few iterations of npm were um, were essentially just taking what I was doing by hand and turning it into a, a you know a little shell script I could run. Um, the first registry was actually a, a git repo full of JSON um, that it would that it would download stuff from. Hmm. That didn't last very long because that was a that's a terrible pattern. Um, just it, it ends up being when I say terrible, I mean it was a lot of work for me personally and I, I don't I don't like that. Um, no. And it was kind of <laughs> it was kind of interesting, actually. I wasn't trying to really build a package manager per se. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have said that that was a thing I was going to do to like you know strike out from fame and fortune. Um, it was really just I want to build websites, and in order to build websites, I have to have a web framework, and in order to have a web framework, I have to have components, and those components, mm -hmm. I have to have a way to get them. Well, okay, I guess we need a package manager. Um, so I started started doing that. We um, over time that that started to become a really popular thing. 
I, I went around sending pull requests to a bunch of different repos to add package.json files to everybody's little module. I mean, we're talking like dozens of things where it was like the entire package community at that time. Um, so by today's standards, it was, it was a rounding error. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so then the, uh, um, the big, the big kind of aha moment for me was when I started seeing people in the IRC channel, um, telling other people to put package.json files. I was like, this is a person I've never met telling another person I've yeah. never met how to use NPM. This is like, holy wow, this is amazing. 